This is Dr. Chad Edwards, and I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about uh, blood sugar and carbohydrates and kind of how all this stuff plays together and how we can influence that uh, you know, for our benefit. So any carbohydrates that we consume in our diet gets broken down and absorbed into our body as blood sugar. Now, we keep a very tight range on our blood sugar, generally between 70 and 100. When our blood sugar goes below 70, we start having some problems with our brain, and that's because our brain is a glucose hog and it utilizes primarily glucose, almost exclusively glucose. So when our blood sugar goes below 70, we don't have the energy that our brain needs, and so we start developing hypoglycemia symptoms, and generally these are um, unconsciousness, some shakiness. As, it, as that progresses and develops, we can... Uh, go into a coma, have seizures, and and potentially die. So we have to have a mechanism that gets our blood sugar up and keeps it uh, kind of in a more normal range. And that's the job of glucagon. Glucagon's job is to get that blood sugar up. Now, if we go on the other end of the spectrum, and certainly if we go above 140, then we start developing what are called advanced glycation end products. So that's when our blood sugar goes up uh, too much. That excess blood sugar starts attaching to substances in our body. Uh, protein is one of the more common. And it starts causing a whole host of problems that are often seen when diabetics have very uncontrolled blood sugars. Uh, so this, this, you know, your elevated blood sugar is incredibly, incredibly toxic. So we have to have a substance or a mechanism that gets our blood sugar back down into a more normal range. And that substance is insulin. Now, insulin is the feasting hormone. So if you think back to Bible times, we had fasting and, and uh, or the, uh, you know, years of famine and years of feasting. And this is the, the feasting hormone. Its job is to store. Now, I believe that insulin is very toxic because it can cause a whole host of problems when it's too high. However, it's less toxic than having a, a blood sugar uh, that's too high. So it's kind of, you know, the lesser of two evils. I think that the best way to deal with this is to keep the insulin levels as low as possible. We'll talk more about that in a second. So Insulin comes in, and, and its job is to drive glucose into tissues where they can be utilized, number one, and number two, to get the blood sugar back down into a more normal range. So the liver is one of those tissues that utilizes glucose <coughs> and is uh, insulin responsive. The second tissue is muscle. Now, when these tissues become full, they they can't take any more sugar and it, as this happens over time they become resistant and and don't want to take any more sugar they kind of batten down the hatches so to speak they start down regulating their insulin receptors and we start developing insulin resistance so we talked about liver and muscle being responsive to insulin and storing blood sugar and the the last tissue and the only other place when when uh, liver and and muscle stores are filled with glucose is, is fat cells. And so when we have too much carbohydrate intake and we fill our liver, or we fill our muscle, the only other tissue that can take fat or that can take the, the blood sugar is fat. So a lot of people say, well, what about exercise? Um, there's a couple of things with exercise. And one of them is that you have some uptake of glucose into the muscle independent of insulin. It's insulin independent glucose transport. But when we've got our, our muscle and, and liver full of, of uh, sugar, all of the extra calories that we consume or the extra carbohydrates that we consume goes to fat. Now, when we're exercising in a very high insulin environment, we cannot tap into those fat cells near as efficiently. And so the exercise that we're doing, it, it takes a while for us to be able to start tipping into uh, into those fat cells. So we need to try to control the insulin levels and the way I propose is the best way to do that is to control our, our intake of carbohydrates. A low glycemic or a low carbohydrate diet I believe is one of the best ways to, uh, to approach this. Hope this answers some questions for you about how I think a, uh, your diet controls you not only your blood sugar, but also how we can use it to influence the hormones to get a favorable response during exercise and for diabetics. Thanks.